So yeah, yesterday during the talks, I got this email about a GitHub pull request. I, I don't know if you guys can all see the, the date here, but it was submitted in 2012. So I blame this finally being merged on EmpireJS. Um, so like, I, like they said, uh, I, I work at 538. I do kind of uh, visual graphics for the stories there. I work at Rhizome as the senior developer, kind of the only developer. It's a really small organization. And I work on this project with HHMI Genelia. And the reason why I'm so spread out, I guess, is I'm a reformed freelancer or something like that. So I used to have like eight projects going on at the same time, but now I'm down to three, so it feels a little bit more manageable. Uh, so the story behind the Lightning is that uh, I, I got a call from, from Jeremy, uh, the, the guy who is sort of the lead on this zebrafish imaging project at, at Genelia. So they take a lot of scans of zebrafish and get all this data, and they kind of don't know what to do with it. Um, and if you're like me and you're not really part of the neuroscience world, you've probably never heard of Genelia. Um, when I first talked to them, they said, hey, we're based out of DC. Uh, maybe you can come down and visit. Uh, we'll show you around and we can kind of discuss like if there's a fit for you here, if we have a job open. I said, that's great. Like, when should I come down? Should I take the train down? So I take the train down there, and they're like, yeah, but we're not actually in DC. We're actually in Ashburn, Virginia. And they said, we're not actually in Ashburn, Virginia. We're actually in the woods outside of Ashburn, Virginia on this campus. And they said, you can stay in the guest house. So I'm thinking, like, it's going to be some creepy, creepy house in the middle of the woods. Um, and I get there, and, and it's this place. Um, so this is what they do. Uh, basically, they have this really, really cool imaging technology that allows them to see every single neuron uh, in a zebrafish brain simultaneously uh, at around 5 hertz. And so there's about 100,000 neurons happening. So they get these huge data sets, um, and they crunch them down with Apache Spark, do some machine learning analysis on them. Um, but they didn't have a good system for visualizing the output of this data and to do it in like a really reproducible way. So we were trying to figure out how to do that. Um, so this is kind of an example of like, uh, this is a zebrafish brain uh, where the colors are actually uh, added artificially after the fact uh, based on uh, some, some clustering algorithm. And this whole thing's in 3D. So this was made in MATLAB. Um, <laughs> Just like some handwritten script that like, you could probably never figure out how to run again, if you, even if you wanted to. So we came up with the goals of the project. We want something that's web-based and going to be able to take advantage of all the new technologies that are coming out all the time, uh, but not really be tied to anyone. So we support D3 and 3JS primarily right now, but we're kind of li library agnostic with the architecture. Um, and we really want this separation of concerns. So like, you can be able to uh, crunch all this data, maybe on your huge cluster. Um, you can run the experiments, and then you can, you can visualize the output. And you need to be able to have this feedback loop. So like, while you're doing the analysis, you need to see what it looks like, because maybe that's going to, you know, you're going to change the position of the microscope, or you're going to uh, choose a different part of the data set to look at. Um, so it's really important this, that this thing is fast, and it's like, really quick to be responsive with what you're doing. Um, and finally, because it's sort of targeted for a scientific audience at the beginning, it needs to be really reproducible and scalable. Um, so this is a thing that I've been building. This is our landing page, Lightning. Uh, I describe it as an API for data visualization. So the architecture is mainly that there's this Lightning server running somewhere, uh, and you just send a bunch of data to it. You just send post requests with data, and you kind of send some metadata too along. So like, what do you want it to look like? What kind of form do you want it to have? And then it'll produce this output. Uh, this is all built on the server side with Express, um, using Postgres as a backing data store. Um, and in, in order to be able to use all these different libraries, um, none of the, the, uh, the JavaScript is, is is built beforehand. It's all, when you open up the page, it's going to say, OK, here's a visualization like a line plot or a scatter plot or like some 3D volume. What libraries do I need for this? So maybe I need D3 this time. Maybe I need 3JS. Maybe I need some mapping library. 
it can load that all on the fly, so you're not getting these like giant JavaScript payloads that will just like crash your browser. Uh, on the client side, we support uh, JavaScript, Python, and Scala. Uh, as of a couple days ago, the JavaScript client is uh, at both Node.js and the browser. Um, and that's mainly because I wanted to like run some code in this talk, <laughs> so now it works. Um, and the output, we, we give you URL permalinks um, or just iframes that you can embed or we can actually make images. So to get started, you really need two things. You need the server to be running and then you just need to send data to it. Uh, so what's, once the server is running, this is what it looks like. Um, you've got a nice welcome sign, kind of some details over here. And the whole thing is based on sessions, this concept of a, of a session, which is really just uh, meaning, like, right now I'm doing this analysis and it's just a logical grouping of where I'm going to store my visualizations. So this is what it looks like when you create a session. Uh, there's nothing here right now. I can name it whatever I want. EmpireJS. Um, and I can actually go in here and create a uh, visualization. You can do this, you just put some JSON in here, like you could do this using curl or something. It's just hitting the API. <laughs> there we go. So when I hit enter, um, it actually went out and did, a, did some WebSocket stuff with Socket.io and figured out that it needed to uh, load in D3 and, and then it created this line graph. Um, and you can just keep doing this with kind of, you know, you drop down and these are all the choices you have, like adjacency matrix, you can kind of do these force-directed graphs, images, um, you can make maps, this one's kind of cool. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to uh, just make, make sort of a, a color gradient map in uh, D3, but it's really quite a pain. Um, but this makes it a bit easier. You can say what regions you want, um, and it'll try to figure out, it can do uh, the US or the world right now. Uh, hopefully we can support more in the future. Man, I'm really bad at these closing braces. And so it just renders a map. You can kind of add you know, your own descriptions to these. And then we give you all sorts of links here. So if you want to share this um, with a friend, you can get a page that's just this thing. Send it out, send it to your colleagues, whatever. So to run a server, there's a few different ways. Uh, the easiest one, I think, if, you're, if you have a Heroku account, you can just press this button. Um, there's really no configuration required. It'll just run. Uh, you can also install straight from NPM. They give you a binary uh, that you can run locally. And finally, we support uh, Docker, although I'm like the only person in the world who's not a huge Docker fan right now, so I'm not going to be the best person to ask questions about this. Uh, so a few examples. This is just a, a scatter plot. It's kind of a typical D3 type thing. You can zoom in and out. Um, you, can, you can add different colors, different opacities to these, add labels if you want. Uh, one thing that's kind of cool, we extended the uh, D3 zooming behavior with another degree of freedom. So instead of just being able to zoom one way, you can actually zoom this way too and this way. And then you can do a you know, similar thing in 3D, just using 3JS. Um, and it gives you controls to kind of fly around. You've got this Tron-like landscape here. Yeah, these are pretty fun to play with. And so this is what the code actually is, is going to look like when you're writing uh, with the JavaScript client. The first thing is just to require it. So it's, it's common JS is what we support if you're not using CommonJS. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you can submit a pull request. Actually, that's a bad thing to say. Just open an issue if, if you really need it, and we'll work on it. 
but basically, you can tell it, like, are you running locally or are you running on a server somewhere? So right now, I made a, a Heroku instance uh, just for this. So it's saying, OK, here's, my, here's where the server is. Here's where you're going to post the data. And then if I run this, uh, nothing will happen. But just to prove to you that, you know, this is. This is working. I got an object. That's great. Really uh, <laughs> helpful. I actually made this, uh, this live editor on the ferry back from Staten Island last night. <laughs> this was all static before, but now, uh, <laughs> now it's all live. So this is a little bit more involved example. Uh, using lodash or underscore, we can create just kind of a random uh, array of values, uh, then pass it to this line function. Then there's a promise returned, and you can kind of do with this uh, whatever you want. Uh, so you can do things like get the raw HTML and then append it to the page, uh, get a link to an iframe and embed it in the page, uh, get a link to an image and, and add that to the page, anything like that. So I just wrote this little function that it's just going to uh, add the HTML to the page over here. So this is random. So what just happened is in, in the browser here, I sent a post request to that, that EmpireJS Heroku server. It stored all the data, figured out what it needed to do, and then sent it back to me and told me how to render it. Um, we can change this around a little bit just to see. Um, use sine wave. It's kind of crazy. You can do something like that. Um, there's plenty of stuff you can do. And more or less, all of the uh, visualization types are just functions on the lightning object. So there's line, uh, the next one. You can do scatter, matrix, uh, anything is, ju is just a function on here. And they kind of work like you would expect. You pass in uh, your, an array of your x values, an array of your y values. You can also pass in more metadata, so if you want uh, points to have particular colors or something like that. I think this should uh, not run. Okay, there we go. So it turns them all red. Uh, you can do it point by point or for all of them. You can change the alpha. Something like that. And uh, the kind of cool thing is that these, none of these are, are static, really. So you can create it once, um, and this is what's here. But you can also sort of hang on to this viz object, and you can, you, you can keep adding data to it. You can keep running your experiment or uh, getting your log streaming in and, and keep updating it. So an example of that is here. So I'm going to make a 3D scatter plot, uh, just like the one I showed you right here. Uh, but then, once it, once it plots, I'm going to set an interval function uh, and just keep appending some data. It's just going to be a sine and cosine function, so it's not going to be anything crazy. But So it'll keep adding points here. And what you're seeing is a, uh, an iframe here coming from the, the Heroku server and then sending me uh, WebSockets to update it. There's a couple other features I want to talk about uh, that in terms of uh, customization. So like I said before, we don't really want you to be stuck with the default libraries uh, that we give you or the default visualization types that we give you. So if you don't like anything, you can go into this panel here, look at all the visualization types that are available. Um, and for every one, we provide some example data. And we actually show you the JavaScript, uh, any CSS associated with it. Um, and then the sample data is done here. And you can go in and kind of change anything you want here. So if you know, if you don't like this default fill color or something for some reason, you can just change this um, and see, like, okay, I like it better red. Uh, 
this is all live updating, and then you can either, you can ch choose to save it back to the server if you want. So then, all of the uh, all of the graphs you made like this will now have your your new custom styles. Um, we can even take this like a little bit further. So one thing that I find really cool is is this website Blocks that uh, Mike Bostock made. Uh, that just takes a gist and uh, sort of renders it with D3. So my colleague at 538 made this cool graphic, uh, Allison McCann made this, uh, showing the states. And it's kind of this interesting block style map of the United States. Um, and what was really cool is someone emailed us and said, hey, I, I like the graphic, I made a block version of it. Um, so you can play around with this, click around, whatever. Uh, and, and not only did this person make it, but then uh, Mike Bostock made one too. It's a little prettier. And he says, I just wanted to embed the data with ASCII art. <laughs> <laughs> so the, this is pulling straight from the, uh, the ASCII to, to render this. Um, but what you can do is if you have a gist in sort of this style, you can import that into Lightning um, and then start rendering these gists with our sort of data handling on the back end. Uh, so I, I took this code and adapted it a little bit to work. Uh, let's see if I can find this. Yeah, so this is uh, D3 to run and render that, that thing you just saw. Um, but it's, in, it's not pulling from ASCII art anymore. It's uh, pulling from, from this kind of data. It has selected states and then a, a fill color that you can choose. So I can take this URL and hopefully go back to my slides. And then in this panel, I can say uh, preview remote visualization and plug it in here. And so this just cloned that uh, gist, brought it down to the server, put it into the right format. So we have the JavaScript, the styles here, um, and the data. And it's all live for you to play around with, too. So you can update the data or whatever. Um, change the fill. And if you say, hey, like, I really like this one. I want this to kind of be part of my suite of visualizations that I have now. You can go up to the top and hit import. Uh, give it some sort of name. Uh, I think state fill works. So this is in the list of things that I have now, there's a uh, state fill just like everything else. And so you can actually call this from the client now too. So it, it doesn't have its own special function, but if you give it the name, you can tell it what visualization type you want, um, what data you want, what fill you want, anything. You can go out, it'll go talk to the server and then render it for you. Um, and so I think this is really powerful, especially if people want to start sharing uh, their kind of front-end graphics code in a bit more structured way. So, let's see. Yeah, so this is a, all the states I've lived in in the United States visualization. Um, anyway, this is more or less uh, what I have. I want to say thanks again for listening. Um, this is, these are links, uh, these slides are online, I'll, I'll tweet the link out after this. Um, but we maintain a, a chat room that we're pretty much always in. If you have any questions or want to contribute or, you know, just want to say hi, um, come say hi in the Gitter chat room, we're always in there. I'm happy to answer anything. Um, and I also want to say thanks to uh, Jeremy Freeman at uh, HHMI Genelia. He's been kind of a huge help with this project and provided a lot of guidance on it. Um, yeah, so thank you for listening. Uh, come find me after if any questions.